Hey guys, what's up? It's Alec Torelli, and welcome back to an episode of Ask Alec, where I take your questions and answer them here in short videos. Today's question comes from one of my readers, Quinn, who's from Colorado. Uh, he's 21 years old, he's been playing poker seriously for four months, and he's absolutely in love with the game. He finds that he's won several thousand at casinos, he's relatively profitable online, and numbers has always been his thing and his gut instinct is very good. He says he's struggling in taking the next step and committing himself truly to going pro. He keeps getting stole stories about people whose lives have been ruined because of poker and his, his girlfriend and family and friends are telling him to be careful and it seems like uh, they think he's having a problem because he's addicted to poker. Uh, so he says he studies every second he can get. He loves the videos. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And he goes through every resource he can find online. He loves learning. And basically he is struggling to take that next step and really lacking that confidence to do it. And his biggest fear is, is taking that next step on his journey to go pro and feeling like everyone around him is right. And they say, you know, I told you so. And he's just the addicted poker player that they chopped him up to be and they judged him for. So Quinn, man, this is a great, uh, a great question and thank you for writing in. Um, this is an interesting spot and I really relate to where you are because I have been there myself. I remember when I was 18 at SMU and I was debating going pro and I felt like in my heart this was the right thing to do and then everyone else around me was you know, mirroring the same things that they seem to be saying to you, like you're crazy, you're an addicted gambler, uh, you're it's never gonna work, you should never drop out of college, um, and you know, poker's crazy, it's only for degenerates. And this was also at a time when, you know, there was very few professional poker players so that they didn't even have a model of people that had done it. And so it just, there was a stigma around it, there still is, uh, and I totally understand what you're going through. And, um, and it is a challenge. So the first thing I think to accept on this journey is that it takes a while, if ever, to get the people around you on board with your journey. And if you're fortunate enough to have family and a girlfriend uh, and friends that are really supportive, that makes a huge world of difference. But ultimately, it unfortunately sometimes takes you succeeding first or showing them that this is something that um, you really love and care about and that you're not a gambler, even though there are people that do this for gambling you're doing it as a business and a profession. And as much as you could do in your life to help clarify that distinction, and as much as you can treat yourself like a professional, I think the better that your odds are that you're gonna succeed, the more confidence you're gonna have because the better chance you are gonna have of getting these people on board. So a couple things that really worked for me in my career were first and foremost, it starts with myself. So I was putting external blame on other people like they don't understand, nobody's taking me seriously, it's all their fault. When in reality, it was also like, if, you know, if I'm going out and partying on weekends and not committing serious time studying poker, of course people are gonna perceive you the way that you treat yourself. So I started, I remember pretty much overnight when I decided to drop out of school and play poker, I decided really that like, I am a professional now and being a professional starts with like, what is a professional? A professional is someone that decides they wanna be a professional first and foremost, and then they have the success that they, they aspire to that professionals have. So I knew that first and foremost, it meant treating myself like a professional. No more going out and partying, studying on weekends, being disciplined, getting up early on Sundays, uh, studying and grinding for the tournaments. And it was really about treating myself like a professional athlete would to try and have the results that a professional athlete does in a mental sport like poker, and then to mimic the lives of people that I really looked up to and admired, and I wanted their success, but in my own industry. So I was modeling behavior after people that were successful, and that reflected externally, and other people started to see the way that I was handling myself, such as studying more, uh, managing my money correctly, really taking things seriously, maybe even spending less money to have more money uh, to use for my poker bankroll, managing my bankroll better to say, look, I can't afford these games or I'm only playing these games until I win this much and then I'm gonna move up in stakes. And so all of this, these ways that I was handling myself and my running my poker business now as a professional reflected to the people around me and they started to get on board because they started to see that I was really serious about this and that there was a skill component and that I was, I did have a metho uh, methodical plan and I wasn't just there, you know, a hamster hitting the dopamine uh, you know, sensor to get more cocaine, but I was actually just like loving this process of succeeding at poker and I was really on the other side of it and acting like, not that you can be as a hamster, that's probably not the best analogy, but just that I was on the other side of this, uh, you know, there's clear people that are just gambling with uh, house money, with their money they can't afford to lose, and there's people that are playing poker seriously as a profession 
that are acting responsibly, risking money they can't afford to lose, and doing it in a way that is uh, giving themselves the best odds of success. So I implore you to kind of adopt these systems and really get this in place in your own life, figure out how to manage your money, figure out how to manage yourself, treat yourself like a professional, make the sacrifices that uh, you need to make in order to achieve those results, and then I think it's easier to get the other people around you on board. Uh, this is actually so big of a thing that one of the lessons that we do in our academy program is we have an entire module on gaining appreciation from others uh, because it is so important. And I believe it was such an important part of my success was to have you know my wife on board, my family on board, um, and then my friends on board that were supporting me to say like you know my poker friends that were like you can do this and to see that um, in my own uh, to see have that support in my own life really helped me to get the confidence to take that next step on my journey and just keep progressing and seeing that like, you know, this was paying off and that there was a way to do this. <clears throat> and if I had a system and I followed it and I worked really hard, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. So I shared some of those tips with you um, and I hope that really helps you on your journey. Uh, and I think ultimately some of it comes back to just accepting that only you know what's best for your own life. Uh, and we have another module on, on overcoming fear. So one of the things that I think is important that I'll share with you from that module is getting to a place where you accept that other people have opinions for what you should do with your life, and you accept that they want what's best for you, but you also have the confidence to know that your truth comes from within and that only you know what's right for your life. So a lot of things that you're hearing or seeing from other people around you is noise. And when the voice of those people or the noise of the other people around you speaks louder to yourself than your own voice, then you're putting the opinions of other people above what you know your own truth to be, and then you sometimes end up compromising what you know to be right, what you know to be true for yourself, because out of fear, or because you wanna impress other people, or because the opinion of other people matters more to you than your own truth, and then you're in a spot on defense where you're like, okay, I have to do this other thing because I'm afraid, or because other people's opinions matter, or because I wanna impress these people, or because I don't want them to think this, or because if I fail, they're gonna think that. And so you're always at a disadvantage because the collective opinion of everyone else matters more than your own truth. But if it's the opposite, if your own truth matters the most, then it, then it's like, you know, oil and vinegar. It, like those things, you know, they come on to you, but they don't attach to you because it's, it's, it's never going to um, like strike to your core because you know that what you're doing is right for you at the time. And if it ends up going to a dead end, you're gonna pivot, you're gonna go a different direction. But this was right right now and you have to trust that inner truth uh, of your own life because only you are in the first person, right? Life is a single player game and you have other people around you that support you, but you're in the driver's seat. You make all the decisions, you make your own bed, and ultimately you're gonna be there in 20, 30, 40 years and you're either gonna say, I did it and I gave this a try and it was right, or I didn't do it and it was right, or the worst thing is to say I didn't do it and it was wrong. So you gotta look ahead, I think, and reflect on your life in you know 30 years and look back to the 21-year-old self, Quinn, now and say, what am I gonna regret more? And am I doing this out of fear or am I doing it out of uh, like logic and rationality? Because if it's fear that's holding you back, then that's something to, to overcome. If you're not deciding to take that next step as a pro because rationally it's not a good decision because you have to support a child, fine. That's, that's a logical place to do it. But if it's, if it's all systems are go and you know that this is the right decision for your life and you, your tr inner truth speaks to you and you know this is the right choice, and you've outlined your worst case scenario, and if it goes bad, you're not gonna lose that much, and if it goes right, the sky's the limit, and the worst case scenario is you're a year older, and you're back where you started, which isn't that big of a deal, because you're 21, and all systems are go, but the one thing holding you back is the voice of your mother's head, that's the thing you gotta overcome, because ultimately, you know, you make your own bed, and so I hope that helps on your journey, Quinn. Uh, I hope you like this video. If you do, more, on t more awesome content's coming at Conscious Poker. Give it a like, let me know your thoughts in a comment, subscribe to this channel. Thank you guys all for your attention and uh, much love here. See you guys soon.